Japanese art. It has a history of over 10,000 years. In this small island country, unique art forms have been developed in every era. That history lives on to this day. Hello, I'm Megumi Sasaki. I was born and raised in Japan, but I've lived in New York City for more than 20 years. I'm a documentary filmmaker and have made films about contemporary art. But right now, I'm so fascinated to learn more about Japanese art and its history of over 10,000 years. Art Time Traveler. About 300 years ago, when Tokyo was called Edo, ukiyo-e paintings of geisha and beautiful women were very popular. These bijinga, or portrait of beautiful women, became an important genre in Japanese art. In this episode, we look at bijinga still being drawn today and dive deep into Japanese beauty. I'm at the bookstore today. Here it is. This is the corner of women's fashion magazines. So let me show you a few faces of contemporary beauties. It must have taken a lot of time to create this perfect beauty by top makeup artists and photographers. And out of the hundreds of photographs taken, the best shop is selected for these covers. The beautiful women on magazine covers and ads around town. They represent the standard of beauty for people today. In today's world, women's beauty is captured mostly by photographs. But there was a time it was hand drawn by artists. So let's go back in time and take a look at the history of Bijinga, or pictures of beautiful women. In the 18th century, ukiyo-e bijinga became very popular among the townspeople in Edo. The people in these portraits were real women around town. They quickly became famous. The man who made ukiyo-e bijinga popular was Kitagawa Utamaro. He spent his life portraying the beauty of women leaving behind over 2,000 paintings. Ukiyo-e was usually a multicolored wood block print that was cheap and easy to duplicate. Popular painters like Utamaro, however, hand-drew one-of-a-kind ukiyo-e for special customers. In 2014, Kitagawa Utamaro's masterpiece a hand-painted Bijinga Ukiyo-e was exhibited for the first time in 66 years. This is just incredible. It's almost like a movie scene. There are a lot of drama. I almost hear these women chattering. I wonder what they're talking about. Two meters high and 3.5 meters wide. Hukagawa in the Snow is said to be the largest masterpiece in all of Ukiyo-e. The setting is a restaurant in Hukagawa, a red light district in Edo. Besides a boy and girl, it is a painting of 25 women. Utamaro's ideal world was full of beautiful women. Hukagawa in the snow was actually missing for a long time 
called the Phantom Painting. It was found in 2012 after 64 years. When the work was rediscovered, people were stunned that the brilliant colors had survived over 200 years. But some damage and signs of aging can be seen on the mounting and parts of the painting. At Tokada Museum of Art, the purchaser of the painting, top-notch restoration experts worked for one year to repair the work until it could finally be exhibited. Museum director Tadashi Kobayashi is one of the discoverers of Hukagawa in the snow. So what was your reaction when you first saw this real painting? For someone who has been studying ukiyo-e for years, discovering this work was a dream. When I saw the painting, I must say, I couldn't stop my eyes from welling up. What's the uniqueness of Utamaro's paintings? Well, it depends on the person, but I'm very interested in how Utamaro has drawn the beauty of each woman to be complex and different. Each woman's pose is unique, but when you look at it as a whole, they all seem connected as a single group. This creates a very lively scene, which I think is the painting's greatest charm. Compared with other red light districts in Edo, Hukagawa was seen as a classier, more mature place. Here, the women's kimonos are painted in dark colors, a selection that could only be by Utamaro, who knew that world very well. In the back room, geisha play rock, paper, scissors. Utamaro may have actually seen this scene. In the hall, a maid carries bedding. Here's a girl sneaking a few bites of food. A restaurant with only women may be unrealistic but the details add reality. If you look closely, you can see the women's kimonos are all different. This ability to distinguish kimonos was a skill that was asked of painters and also what people enjoyed seeing. The geishas and courtesans were the most fashionable women of that time. The kimonos they wore, their hairstyles and makeup styles, received much attention. In this one, the women's bottom lips are green. That was the latest makeup trend at the time. I think for women, this painting was almost like a fashion magazine so to check the latest trend, right? Maybe for men, I don't know, this is like a Playboy magazine. <laughs> I think each man would pick, okay, maybe she's my favorite yeah. or she's my favorite, yeah. right? Kitagawa Utamaro who created the genre called Bijinga. I want to learn more about what's behind his paintings. So I'm visiting a Canadian scholar and collector of ukiyo-e. Hello, 
David. David Bull is an artist himself, drawing ukiyo-e influenced woodblock prints for over 30 years. Here's a folder of some prints. These are, these okay. are from my, these are from my collection. These oh, are the Bijinga. Beautiful, Hontoda. Mm, maybe yeah. you know some of these. These are from the Meiji time. Beautifully carved, beautifully right. printed. Beautiful woman. This is a Taisho era reproduction. Uh -huh. and, uh, it's so beautifully made. And, uh, wow. It's very difficult now to carve at the same level that they did back then. Okay. Kitagawa Utamaro greatly changed the world of Bijinga with his unique composition. This Bijinga is by Torihikyo Naga, who was popular before Utamaro. Here, tall Edo women are painted in full length. But Utamaro created a completely different composition. He filled the canvas with just the women's upper body. Gestures and even the makeup were drawn in detail, so he could show a more intimate kind of beauty. But for me, it's frustrating that I can't read the women's emotions. You know, when you look at all this woman's face, they mm. look kind of like, they don't look re realistic. Well, there's lots of very interesting things about this, you know, of course. Right? You look at all these, they all have exactly it's... the same shape nose. Right. And it's always exactly the same shape angle. The mm -hmm. nose never comes past the edge of the face. And we think, there's a strict set of rules. The nose had to be like this, the eyes had to be like this. So what's left for the artist to add originality? Right. It's really, really difficult to think. There's nothing left to do. Just make the nose, make the eyes, and that's it. You're finished. So the very interesting question this brings up is, it's huge, is the genre of ukiyo-e, mm -hmm. with its very simplistic drawing, a hook nose, little tiny eyes, little tiny lips, right. is that genre capable of showing emotion? David believes Utamaro gave these beautiful women many emotions. And the people of Edo were able to see those emotions. But in Utamaro's era, presumably, he must have thought that all of the people who saw these prints uh -huh. could understand what he was trying to say. I see. I mm. wonder if he succeeded back then, when well, he was alive. The yeah. failure to me is not in Utamaro. The mm. failure is in us these days, who have lost the ability to see this nuance and sense mm -hmm. this nuance. Yeah. But whether we can see these feelings and see these emotions or not, it doesn't really bother me. To me, ukiyo uh -huh. like this is a genre that is decorative. Mm -hmm. I don't see it as having deep psychological meaning. I just love the beauty of them, as do most people. Now, we just take them as clean, simple, beautiful, decorative pieces of art. Right. That, to me, that's what bijinga as a genre uh -huh. means. How has bijinga changed since Utamaro created it? Today, art historian Yuji Yamashita has offered to show me some modern Bijinga. Yes, thank you so much for coming in such a rainy day. I'm so excited to see that modern contemporary Bijinga today. Konnichiwa. This gallery exhibits works by a painter named Yasunari Ikenaga. Amazing color. Yes, the color is unique. 
It's very different from ukiyo-e, but mm. somehow it's very Japanese. Mm -hmm. This earthy feel. Mm.